Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. In uh, this video, I'm continuing my analysis into critical thinking. We're in uh, section three of the analysis. The section is titled Interwoven Arguments. Um, what I'm going to do is present four forms of interwoven arguments. There are many, many different forms. A lot of the, the analysis behind um, mapping out and diagramming interwoven arguments requires that you are comfortable with some of the concepts. So I'm going to present three. A lot of this will allow you more flexibility than the other two sections. In the previous two sections, um, both sections one and two were very, very strongly mathematically informed, be it Venn diagrams or um, predicate logic in the first section or in the second section um, that we saw before, heuristic modeling, statistical inferencing, stuff like that, even though I didn't get into it that heavily. Um, this isn't going to be uh, a mathematical uh, section per se. In this section, what we're going to be doing is using critical thinking and the idea of uh, argument mapping to analyze interwoven arguments, arguments that come from many, many different approaches to attack several points or to support bolster one point. Um, and unlike the other two, sections, once we got to the end, you guys know the format. The format is we start off very, very simply, we take all of those ideas, identify some of the patterns, complicate it at the end. At the end, in the last two sections, there were only there was only one answer, one correct answer. At the end of first, section one, there was only one correct answer. End of section two, what I just did, only one correct answer. This, however, there's more flexibility. What you'll find out is that you'll have the ability to create your own answers, given, um, you know, how you interpret the text and how you justify the text. So a lot of this will have to do with text interpretation, which I'll explain in a little bit. At the end of section three, we will be analyzing uh, a big chunk out of uh, John F. Kennedy's civil rights speech, which is you know one of the top hundred speeches uh, in American rhetoric. And um, I just thought it was cool. I wanted to find a really cool speech to analyze, to apply all these concepts to. So I searched, found the speech, and uh, decided to use it. Uh, but we need to work our way up to JFK speech because his speech is is pretty heady and uh, and it's very good and it's very clear it's very it's very academic but it's also very very clear so that you know anybody could understand it so with that being said let's begin um, section three of the analysis so this is critical thinking and this is uh, section three. Section three is interwoven arguments, and uh, this should be a, a relatively smooth section. Hopefully, uh, you'll find it. I uh, hope you find all of these series, all of these sections of this series, interesting. But for me personally, um, you know, I'm good with with math and stuff. But I really, really like applying those concepts, not for math. I'm not a mathematician. I'm not a computer science person. I'm not a logician. I really, really like taking those concepts and applying it to rhetoric applying it to the analysis of argument. That's what I really love to do. So a section like this for me is, is a great section because um, it's, it's, it's a cool way of taking all of these abstracted concepts and uh, applying it to argument one to analyze argument. But what we're really going to do today, uh, because this is an introduction to logic, this is like a pre-logic, uh, you know, course, critical thinking, we implement logical ideas, but we're not doing logic proper per se, what we're going to be doing here is taking these ideas and looking at these ideas to see, to literally see how the argument looks. So that at an introductory level, you can think to yourself, okay, oh, I can see how that argument looks. And now I want to create an argument that looks like that. Because you, you're not referring to sort of the problem as text. You're referring to the concept as an image, which for me, you guys already know, this is this is how I learn, right? I learn by images. And I, and I teach through the use of uh, images and imagery. So mapping arguments, especially interwoven arguments, is a great way to go about doing that, at least for my sake. So before we get to that, let's begin uh, top of page 7, section 3. Two forms of premise support. So we're going to talk about two forms of... Okay, two forms of premise support. 
The first form is single support. First form is single support. I need to get some more markers. All right. Um, single support is the following: an instance in which one premise supports a conclusion. Very simple. An instance in which one premise and one premise alone supports a conclusion. Now, for all of you logicians, we're not going to get into fallacies and such. We're not going to do any of that now. This is a very, very sort of intro discussion. I want to go very, very slowly, uh, and the approach that I'm going to take is a very non-traditional approach. So before, I always tell students, before you attempt to critique something, before you fully understand what it is, first see where it's going, see what it is, and then you can critique after you have an understanding. Um, again, this is not a logic lecture, so all we're looking at right now is the assumption that we can, um, as you said, single support an instance in which one premise supports a conclusion. So for example, Jason is a professor and a researcher, therefore Jason is a researcher. Right? The conclusion is therefore Jason is a researcher, obviously. Why do we know that? Because in the premise it says that I was a researcher. Right? So of course we know that this might be dogmatic or self-referential, this might be you know, circular reasoning. There's a lot of critiques that you could pose to this, that's not important. The, the importance is that we are drawing a conclusion from a single premise. Okay. Second example, all squares have interior angles of 360 degrees. Um, so if this is a square, it has interior angles of 360 degrees. Pretty simple. Squares have interior angles that total 360. If this is a square, then it has to have interior angles that total 360. 360. It does, therefore it's a square. Right? Might be some problems with that argument. It's not important. The idea is that you have an idea of what a single um, single support argument is. So I give you two examples, and basically the way that you symbolize, or not really symbolize, it's not symbolization, how you um, um, visualize, make a diagram of this. You diagram this by S1, and S1 just, and I put here, right underneath it, um, S stands for any arbitrary statement, right? Jason is a researcher and a professor, right? Okay, you know, Bob is a... I don't know, Bob is a track runner and he loves Gatorade. Okay, so S1, where S stands for any arbitrary um, statement, and then we arrive at some conclusion, right? So S1 with an arrow down. That's basically it, right? So S1 is our arbitrary statement, and that is going to um, lead us towards some conclusion. And what we'll do is we're going to itemize the line numbers of the premise. So if we find out that it's premise 5 that's important, where S1 is directing us towards, therefore, um, so for example, in, in the, the, the claim, just to give you an example before, Jason is a professor and a researcher, just for example, there's many ways you could do this, but let's say I, I decided to separate that into two lines. Jason is a professor, 1. Jason is a researcher, 2. Therefore, Jason is a researcher, right? So what I could do is my claim, my statement claim, leads to, let's say, line two, right? Jason is a researcher on line two. That's basically it. Again, we're not getting into forms of logic or a logical argument. We're, none of this. This is all a precondition to that. We're just saying conceptually, what's important is a recognition that we can use single support to derive a, um, or to support our conclusion. Pretty simple. Number two is what's known as linked. So single supports the first, link supports the second. Um, I'm going to read the quote. Uh, this quote comes out of, I thought I cited the text earlier. Yeah, this quote comes out of um, Gary Jason's um, Critical Thinking, Developing um, an Effective Worldview. I'm using that book. It's a really, really good book. I actually need to bring the book into the office so I can show you the book. It's a great book. For critical thinking, very user friendly, very intro friendly. Um, in addition, with two or three other books and uh, a bunch of resources and stuff. But you guys know I, I always provide my resources and uh, and citations so that you can you know you can do your own research on your own time. All right, link supports the next one: the support of a conclusion by two or more premises. Right, the support of a conclusion by two or more premises. Um, that work together, okay, direct quote. 
um, 